Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Already, this is turning out to be a fantastic series. I think we really enjoyed watching this one in the back, and uh, I definitely have plenty to talk about. Uh, this is the first game, I'm 90% sure, that we have actually seen. <laughs> the caveat, by the way. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure, though, this is the first time that we've actually seen Nigma drop a game with PL since the minor cap. Yeah, they just ran that undefeated run through the lower bracket, and they were picking up a lot of Phantom Lancer nonstop. They picked it up a couple times here at the major. Uh, even in the series that they lost, they won with the Phantom Lancer, but uh, this is the first time that Nigma has lost it, and that's because Beast Coast is a pretty scary team, and they got one of their best heroes. You know, everybody talks about Hector, 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 right? But Chris Luck carried a lot of those games at TI. As he did, and he he played a pretty <laughs> complex Broodmother hero to near perfection. I love the Orchid Ags Rush. The mm -hmm. whole team really just played great. I thought it was over after the laning phase. I'm like, yep, this is Beastmaster vs. Brood. They're crushing the lanes. They're behind the tier two bottom at like 12 minutes into the game. But it's just, they, they just played so well. The tweaks to the Underload item build is an example. He went for the Atos into Crimson Guard. The Atrophy plus the Crimson effectively nullifies the Illusion's uh, damage from the PL. And then you Atos him, there's a pit. That extra disable was critical to killing Miracle a couple of those times. Uh, Kyle, have we really seen the Underlord look this effective though? Because we've seen some other squads try to use it as an answer. And I, I feel like this is the most convincing game that we've seen. Yeah, I, I think Lelis has been popping off this entire tournament. Yeah, yeah. We talked about stand-ins, right, and how they can come in, play with no pressure, but seriously, you know, we thought this team would underperform because Whisper was seen as one of their star players, but they, they Lelis just he looks even better. Yeah, if, if, if any time they're able to sort of get him on a hero that's able to perform from the start, yeah, he will. You know, he's not sort of one of those offlaners that's going to sort of sack the lane, feed a little, fall yeah. behind. Just straight from the off, he's already seeing opportunities to, to get those early kills and, and just sort of get this lead from the start. And as you say, he's just blown us away every single time. And he was pretty much the only liability coming into it. We were. Like, he is a stand-in. That is the worry. But there's absolutely no worry at all with Lelis. He is crushing it every single game. I think the important part is that when he does die, he he always dies uh, offensively. Yeah. You notice that? He's always dying on the enemy side of the map, uh, even yeah. in laning phase. Like, he's actually attacking the enemy heroes and dropping those firestorms and making sure that he's getting CS on the way through. Uh, I, I think it's, like, the important way that he's able to play his off lane. He's always able to get farm out of it, even if he's feeding a little bit. I think one of the other things I want to say is just big picture. You know, uh, pull back a little bit and look at this yeah, completely. Just look at the run that we've seen Beast Coast already go through. And they've had just, we mentioned it before they, we got into the draft of the first one, of the first game. They have had the hardest road possible. If they go down to Nigma, they, they've played against some of the best teams in this tournament have looked really convincing. It's exciting to see what this team's going to be able to do. But if they make it through Nigma and already leading in the series now, you, you got to start asking, how far is a team like this really going to be able to go? And it's so hard to answer that because yeah. you really can expect the world from these guys. You know, they're coming in and playing like this. This was not, you know, this was such a hard game for them to win. They're coming into this match against Nigma and saying, yeah, sure, you can pick Miracle PL, you can pick Kuroki Chen. You know, just happen to be, you know, two of the, like, strongest hero player matchups from these TI winning players. And Beast Coast, they just didn't care. They had an answer. They came into this with a plan. And I think Nigma's going to be really shaken up after that loss because if they're not winning with those heroes, yeah. what are they winning with? It wasn't as if there wasn't like an it wasn't a hard out draft. I would argue like we like Nigma's more. It was just they straight up got outplayed. Like they got brutalized over the map, just ran at by Beast Coast. You typically never see Miracle PL like running for his life. You know what I mean? He's always like doppling, but it's yeah. he's like he's in, he's out, he's baiting spells. It feels more like he's like, you know just being elusive, a uh, nuisance of sorts. This time, it's like when he was on the run, like he was just getting chased down. Yeah, <laughs> like running, he just can't escape. <laughs> he was being hunted nonstop, and yeah. I think um, a big part of his ineffectiveness in the game is there is this underlord answering him. Yes, but he doesn't have a mid laner basically. No. This OD yeah. was answered in so many ways by the brood mother. Uh, yeah, it was a really good Beastmaster pick that helps neutralize the Broodmother, but Broodmother eventually gets a game. OD doesn't. Yeah. Because he's neutralized by the, the Broodmother, he'll never be able to come back. And so it's left entirely onto Phantom Lancer, but, you know, everyone's balled up so much, he's not able to do enough damage to these heroes. And, you know, ultimately, I think that Nigma may have made a slight misstep in picking up this OD early, but also it's just, I don't want to see Nigma that way again. I want to see them uh, enabling Weeha, getting a superior mid matchup against Chris Luck. Don't yeah, show their, I, that hero early if you have to. Yeah, I, I think all of that's very important, but you, you just keep coming back to that idea that Owen already brought up, right? You, 
if they can't do it on these here, that has to be in the back of your mind. You, you even said when you saw the Chen, it's like, oh yeah, 10 years of Chen experience. Yeah. You're definitely comfortable there. Then all of a sudden, Beast Coast comes through and they just slap the food out of your mouth. Yeah. But ultimately, guys, we are going to be going to a quick break here. When we do return, we are going to have the draft and then we are going to get into the next game of this series. The question is, is Beast Coast going to be able to deliver a little bit of an upset? Gaming Esports, professional esports house maker.
Welcome back to Dream League, folks. Well, you guys were on a little bit of break. We were hard at work because the draft has already started, and we have the best minds in Dota already working on it. Kyle, Cap, OD Pixel. Let's actually break down what we've seen so far in the draft that we've been paying a bunch of attention to while the break was going on. Well, it's just a few fans. Nothing major. Uh, Nigma are going to make sure to ban away the buck to start, but other than that, uh, we'll just see what's left in the pool for the first pick. Yeah, we got, we got plenty of time here. If you are coming in right now, though, I do want to let you know this is an elimination series. We got two more series today. This one right now, Nigma versus Beast Coast, and then after that, we have yet another lower bracket matchup. We're going to fill you in on the whole bracket once we actually do keep on trucking throughout the day. What are you thinking, Kyle? I was pretty thorough notes, that's all. Glad Sheever's notes. Prepared. Yeah, they're Sheever's notes. Yeah. Sheever's notes are just absolutely <laughs> next level. I mean, the best part is she does like the bubble letters. She, but for, the bubble the letters like of mean each. stuff. Uh -huh. Like you, the like bubble letters are reserved for like matchups. Yeah. So like if you see the bubble letters, you know it's a different matchup. Yeah, and Sheever's notes are absolutely incredible. Sheever is... That way you can see it from a distance if you somehow forget like what the other team is, you know? It's, it's, like, huh? it's very helpful. It's very helpful. <laughs> well, I'm not a fan of Shiva's notes. It's normally do the dishes, <laughs> dry the washes. <laughs> 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 All right, well, an early Doom pickup. That's always going to feel good. You can potentially Grimstroke them as well, depending on what Beast Coast get in return. There's Train Protector. Uh, uh, I never hate a Ben against it. What else is left? Is Lich still there? 90% win rate on Lich uh, for yeah. uh, Nigma. So maybe at Beast Coast, you might want to pick up that the best five position in the game right now. Yeah, yeah. We, we kept uh, we kept talking about PL obviously because it's yeah. obviously it's, it's one of those heroes that's gonna attract a lot of attention. We talked about Nigma's win rate with that, but there were a lot of heroes that they had for a while that all the way through the minor and into this major they had that 100% win rate on. Um, now we are going to see uh, kind of exactly what we oh. predicted here, but this one's not what you predicted. No, definitely not. This was getting second phase banned in a couple of the series today, specifically by Secret and Puppy. Um, it's very early. The downside of clock is that if you pick a bunch of heroes with escape mechanisms, you just can't really ever lock somebody down. Yeah. Hey, what <laughs> do you know? Think they, back to the bread and butter. I imagine ah. now they'll have some targeted bands. Perhaps that Underlord, they already got rid of the puck, so... Mm -hmm. But this know. is the thing, though. you, you, you got to feel confident in Beast Coast. Like, they know, obviously, that Nygma's going to be picking the PL again. So, you know, it's not like they were picking the clock and being like, oh, darn it, they picked the PL that's going to be able to jump out of the cogs. They're not picking the clock because of that. You know, yeah. they, they, They're going to have another plan for the Phantom Lancer, without a doubt. I don't know. They showed us to game one. I'm siding more with Kyle. And just the fact that there's going to be some cores that you're not going to be able to lock down. This is just the start of it with the Phantom Lancer, who's easily one of the best counters to Clockwork. Uh, you may have to drift this Clockwork into a four position. And oh, I think I'm it's a four anyway. Sure. I think it's Schofield Clock anyway. Yeah, right? probably, yeah. right? But it, it, it still is going to make yeah. me feel a little questionable because if you pick up this four position Clock because there's a Doom, right, then you're also saying, well, we're also going to try lane. Yeah. Right? We're not actually going to have a dual lane to start with, and Nygma already had that information. And you pick up a Doom as well. So you leave the Underlord, because Doom's actually one of the traditional hard counters to Underlord. You can Doom him later in the game to prevent Dark Rifts. The Infernal Blade does max HP based damage. And you also come online faster, and you can outscale thanks to the Devourer. So you just kind of match up well throughout the game. Uh, you're also a natural BKB builder, which is great. You can get right on top of all these heroes. You have difficulties with the ball, but at some point, you're strong. Cap, what'd you do? Nothing. Uh, that me? Was, yeah, that wasn't Cap. But uh, I do want to actually kind of dive in. It was you. No, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, Kyle, sit still. Damn it, Kyle. Gosh darn it. <laughs> uh, but I, I do want to go back to something that Owen was saying, because uh, I, I think it's pretty heads up, obviously, when you, you do see Beast Coast in a position here where they're not going to be surprised by PL getting locked in. It seems like they're almost asking Nigma to pick PL yet again. Uh, it's, yeah. <laughs> because, I mean, I, I'm looking at it at the moment. Mm. Is there any reason why Beast Coast, like, how early can Beast Coast pick the Brood again? If they just want to do a similar they, they, approach? They're well, banning the Brood was the answer to the OD, yeah. more specifically. Not necessarily fair. But you don't think because of the pace that the Brood can play against? Like, you, you feel that was the only reason? You don't think well, it was just their way of saying we can play a game faster than Miracle's the, PL can? The thing is that OD just, like, can't play Dota in that game. And I don't think you're going to be able to pick it, like, fourth here when Nigma okay. still have two cores left and have that same sort of matchup. PL's annoyed by Brood, but you can you can play against it throughout the game. There's the Underlord again. All right. Nigma wanted this. They didn't yeah. ban it out. 
And, and you're saying a lot of that's probably because of the matchup it's going to have against the Doom. I, I imagine so. They could also have a different answer. I am like, I'm sure they're not going to be going for the OD again in this spot. I mean, just look at Beast Coast. They ban away a lot of answers to Underlord specifically, right? Batrider and Necrophos. Ten seconds remaining. So they're probably, they're thinking to themselves like, what is, what is their answer? No. Uh, Rubik is quite solid in this game. You can lift Clock out of the cogs, and stealing the um, Firestorm is always amazing. Mm. Uh, my my brother Winter Wyvern is always nice in general against uh, Clockwork, and it's good. another just good team fight hero that you can have. Now that is something oh. I didn't expect. Um, it's considered a, a soft counter to the Brood because you get so much plus damage from the spiders. Isn't Clock really good against these? Yeah. It is. It's incredibly good. You can't get yeah. Stomp off ever. Um, you have a hard time. It takes like three tries to get Earth Splitter off, and you just kill them throughout the early game because you deal more damage. Uh, you, you can correct me if I'm wrong, right? Like this is coming with my like four IQ that I have that are completely all of my brain cells just pumping trying to to, to break down this draft, but. Uh, just seriously pumping right now. But when I look at this draft, I feel like it's very different than uh, what we traditionally see. I feel like uh, we're we're seeing a lot of answers being locked into things that were seen in the last game instead of what's right in front of them. How often does something like this really happen, Owen? Oh, does this draft feel different than what we expected to see? No. Four brain cells <laughs> let me down. Yeah, combined, you guys are at least eight. What? Nothing. No. I shouldn't ask Owen what? that question. Like, yeah, I asked I Cap, like, Cap would have had my back. Uh, I have, well, it's it's a pretty have. confusing question. That was you a very that. long question. Yeah, that was I used all four the words for like three it words. Was two questions. It was like one of those open AI questions, you know, where they just sort of got a machine to <laughs> well, okay, put so a sentence here's, together. Here's basically what happened. We're going to be a real person. Freaked out what happened halfway through, I realized I asked Owen the question because he hadn't talked in a while. And I said, oh, shit, you just asked Owen a question. He never answers any of your questions. That was so the I, question. That was like the, <laughs> the, the entire page of Aaron Paul or something. You know, you, know, you, at, home, right. you at home on Twitch chat, you're currently <laughs> part of the Turing test. Can you tell if Rich is a real host or not? <laughs> well, birds aren't. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we're not talking about <laughs> <laughs> not your screen play. We're not, it, it, All right, okay. Life Stealer, the, yeah. he's, not he's waking generally up chat speaking, yet. he's going to be fine uh, versus Elder Titan. He actually does... Uh, Good against the right. Doom's early pressure yeah. uh, because he doesn't care about scores. Zero through Feast is able to constantly keep you sustained. He's also a high HP, low armor hero. So, like yeah. filler. I mean, it's, 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 it's the same draft as last game. Yeah. It's just a clock instead of the puck, right? Yeah. It's, everything else is going to do the same stuff, and but and that worked out so. so well, when you say it like that, it is a lot simpler to understand. A lot easier to understand when the you thing, really like the that. The thing is, Life Stealer is also just a great hero in the patch. It's also arguably like one of Vector's like favorite yeah. top three heroes. When it was met in the past, that was his go-to. Shifted out, but now that it's back, uh, it, it's just great. It's awesome against ET. You just. Rage through the spirit, through, yeah. through effectively everything. You also don't, you're not affected by the aura anymore. And uh, there's watch, Wyvern. So That's yeah, a good call from Cap. Yeah. You get out of the clock, and it's also a hard counter to the Life Stealer because you have yeah. two answers to rage and attacks. You can cold embrace your ally, or you aggro ult through the rage and you just stop him in his tracks, kite back, re yeah. I don't want to take too much credit because I feel like this Winter Wyvern is more specifically just a counter Life Stealer, yeah. right? Like you, you've got some very heavy, like, Single target, as long as you kite this guy around, like you've answered their semi-carry, now we're just waiting for that next drop to come in. What is Beast Coast going to do to like turn this this draft and give us some sort of surprise pickup? Because I'm sure they're going to. They're thinking about it, right? There's got to be some sort of Huskar, Templar Assassin, maybe the, still the Brood Mother. Something's going to come out. Yeah. And uh, in addition, there's... A nice synergy between the Wyvern Ultimate and the PL because you're one of the few heroes you can't deal damage, but you can burn mana. And specific, Life Stealer specifically, if you come out of Wyvern LT with no mana, you're not going to be able to rage. You're probably just going to die. You can get purged right after. So there's cool synergy there. I'm really curious to see what Beast Coast last pick. You said you wanted Chris Luck to, ha to go off, and Nigma had to try and like ensure we had a good matchup. You can't do that when overall last pick is in Beast Coast's hands. Dire team back. And they ban the OD. So, <laughs> so they're I expecting... was wondering. I was wondering if Nigma was going to actually fourth pick up the OD. Mm. If they were going to go into that trap. And then was, you're looking group. at it, right? Yeah. It's like life stealer, single target. You've got single target save, underlord. Like, uh, what's the worst that could happen? Well, they could lose, Cap. They could get Chris locked. Ten seconds remaining. What are some other Chris Luck heroes? Well, the AI likes the Quap. He likes the Monkey King. 
Yeah, these sort of fun Monkey. playmaker lane dominators. Mm. The question is, what do you ban out? And what do you play if you're Nygma? Now, you're playing against Lifestealer. I've got a theory here. The Sorry. Wind Ranger. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, there's wow. gonna be temptation mm. there. That is, uh, that is a bold call. Or, 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 or Templar Assassin. Whoa, oh, I like this actually. Although it's typically very is it bad, bad for clock. clock? I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, say, I, I hate this clock against... pick was genius. He <laughs> saw to the future, <laughs> realized Nigma was going to pick all these heroes that are terrible against clock, and then he picked it before they picked him. Yeah, oh, oh, I even like clock against Wyvern because you can rock it and find him in the trees. It, it's like, I'm. It, yeah. it's, well, why do you get in a situation like that, though? Uh, obviously, the clock picked very early on. Uh, I think they wanted something fast. They don't want to get, like, run over by Beast Coast. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, it's got, like, pure damage, a lot of bursts to be able to take heroes out. But, yeah, Chris Luck, Templar Assassin. I, I don't like it against Phantom Lancers so much. It's not uh, ideal, but it's just that it fits what Beast Coast want to do, right? Yeah. They want to play fast. To, it, it's in effect. If you, that's what's so cool about Beast Coast's drafts, because even though see, heroes change, they all sort of fulfill the same play style, mm -hmm. right? They do the same thing for the draft. Cl Schofield's going to play Clock like he just played Puck. He's going to disrupt the team fights, initiate. You have Chris Luck on TA, much like Brood. He's going to spam uh, jungle, push lanes, acquire map control. Instead of spiders, you have traps. And they're just going to try and play fast and, and just crush Nygma. And honestly, I think they've got a pretty good shot to do it. Yeah, what I do like the, the twist that Nygma has made in this Lena pickup. I, I said last game I wanted to see Weeha on like something that was faster paced to be able to set the tone of the game. They also picked up more team fight so they can out team fight Beast Coast. I think that was two things that they just kind of like twisted in their draft. They said, okay, last game we could have won. We just need to make these small alterations and we could still do this. Do you feel like those small alterations could potentially be enough to take the victory for Nygma and tie the series up? I I, I, I also don't think so. I really do think this clock pick has ended up looking very, very good. And this last pick, Lena, looks incredibly vulnerable. I think this could it's gonna be another game where Weeha could struggle heavily because of the the draft that well, the draft that Beast Coast had picked before he even came out with the Lena. I think they sort of picked themselves into a very tough position, Nigma. Yeah, and I mean, this is definitely not the time that you want to be in a difficult position here. Uh, their backs are against the wall, as they do say. Uh, this is an elimination series. Only one of these teams can move forward. The question is, is Beast Coast going to eliminate Nigma after this? All right, welcome back, everyone. We have game number two of Team Niga versus Beast Coast. And what do you think? Do you think the boys can do it? Or do you think that Nigma's gonna come back with a passion and they're I... just gonna crush them? Moxie, you heard the panel. Kuro drafted himself into a bad spot, maybe because he was like, all right, you little shits. I drafted everything well for you in that last game and you lost. All the lanes were perfect for us. But we lost. Now I'm gonna pick something more difficult for you and force you to perform better. Maybe that's maybe that's the that's recipe of success. That's a scary captain. That's like you did Kuro do is, well with did things being handed to you. So did you see, ever see him taking off his belt? Like he's <laughs> scary. Like three persons in this world that scare me. It's my dad, Kuro, and Puppy. Like come on. Yeah, but how do you get mean to GH, right? Yeah, that's true. He's a you saint. Can't. You can't. He's a saint. He, he, but he's one of five. He's one of five, so you can get mad on the other four. Put the extra, the extra honest on everyone else. Got it. 
Yep, uh, this matchup as well, I think this was, I don't know for we, Lina is decent in the lane. Let's just see this They're really here. just slugging away down here. Hector, no, he doesn't get it. It's going to be first blood going this over time to the around, side of Kuro. If you remember in that last match, same situation happened, but it was Beast Coast that got the first blood. So perhaps maybe this is an omen of bad times up ahead for a Beast Coast, but... Yeah, it's just one one death each, Not nothing yeah. special. They have to be careful. You're playing versus Doom and Wyvern. This used to be one of the strongest lanes, not as potent as before because Wyvern isn't played as far as, uh, as before, right? But it's still strong, even for a Nyx. You have to be careful. And we've had a lot of attention being brought to Schofield's clockwork, right? They were talking about it in the draft, how uh, to hold that thought as Kuro bottom lane. Gonna try to body block here from Mind Control. They don't want to allow him to get this kill, but he's just got that fairy fire. He's gonna, he's gonna go for the dive. He's gonna try to get the he's kill on Kuro, but he's just hard. juking around the tower. He may have overcommitted on this. Sure. They'll turn back around and they'll get the kill on Stinger. He popped Salve, popped Fairy. They used everything they had to get that Kuro kill, and now he Arctic burns. And now they even turn on him, and now he doesn't have rage. Now he is getting body blocked by Mind Control. This is feeling real bad right now if you're Hector. They won't rejoin, though. Stinger is here. He's got full health, full mana. Well, not full mana now, obviously, because he's used it. One good thing is there's a Salvo knife, so I think this exchange overall, even though they wasted so much time on their carry, is all right, as he's going to be able to go back into the lane and continue farming, while, while the two heroes on the side of Nygma are just so weak and so low HP that they can't really contest anymore. Talking about this mid lane, TA, A2, uh, we, 11-5, he definitely plays Lina and TA on a different level, we that is, so he understands this matchup inside out. However, it, you don't have to be really good to understand that TA at some point just trashes Lina later on in the game get that blink and suddenly we has to be super defensive. Look how low Weeha falling in this mid lane. Does have the salve though. And you have to keep in mind too, you know, Weeha, amazing mid, but Chris Luck, this is literally his best hero is the Templar Assassin. So he's gonna know this matchup pretty well and he should be able to harass. And already look at that, Weeha's health is just starting to fall. Yeah, and it's he a just tough solved matchup. up, he just solved up, that's it. He has to be careful, he's dropping super low here. They're both just dancing at the edge right now. Well, it, it's a battle of two players that really understand the matchup. You can see it. K1, bot only, mind control. He won't back out. He's full HP. He has core third. Trade a couple of hits again. Lich, very, very good at being able to harass. Also has that save with the frost shield. Why were they being so aggressive early on against this Doom Wyvern lane? Because you oh, just said it, it's very strong. Overall, Nyx is considered, or at least was considered, one of the best heroes versus Doom. It, it got changed a little bit in the recent patch with the changes to Peace, right, on Nyx, but you can still pressure them. You have a Lich. Listen, Moxie. I don't know which supports you play, but just pick Lich, all right? Into I have been button. picking Lich. I've played so much Lich. I'm a filthy Lich picker. But really? again, the Frost Shield comes out. Mind girl, he wants to try to get the kill on Stinger. Singer popping back around and he's able to go and throw out that frost bus. Will eventually get taken down though by Kuro. Yeah, but at the same time, that's perfect. Uh, oh, look at this. The rotation over to the mid lane. Chris Luck trying to get over into those cogs. So he's just holding Weeha in place. He's going to chase after him with that battery assault. Chris Luck, there's the LSA coming through from Wee. I think he's pretty fast. I think he should be able to get out oh, here. Oh, Chris Luck, you need to be careful. I believe someone told me it was Kazu that Epileptic Kid from Virtus Pro has the most pings in one game. He holds the record. He pinged like 9,000 times in one game. I'm surprised Chris Luck wasn't pinging that clock a little bit more to break those cogs so he can come in and start hitting the Lina. That's the only reason we survived. Well, Pop if he moved over, solo. would he have still been able to get the battery assault on? Yeah, he would. It would have, okay. He, the battery assault would have still worked. Mind control. Looks like Hector will just back off. Just this, this trade back and forth in this mid lane, it's, it feels almost a little uncharacteristic, right? Because you know that Hector, he likes to farm. He likes to be active, but he does need to kind of get set off to a good start. And right now it feels he's a bit behind in that lane because of the death. I look at him, he's uh, 21, what, 22 to five. He has CS, he's, he's fighting, but at the same time he is farming. He's brawling and farming at the same time. So he, I, I don't think this is really bad for him. You can see the way he started. Uh, chainmail and uh, Blades of Attack, it's perfect. Chainmail just allows you to be a little bit more aggressive here in the lane. Uh, it gives you that extra armor necessary to sustain all the damage that's coming from Kuro and Mind Control. So, 
good itemization. I'm happy that he isn't rushing that Maelstrom like some players do right now. Oh, the hold in the place. GH getting caught in the cogs with Schofield and Lelis. Can he get Oh, he manages to get himself a kill, though, Man. right before the K I... down the clock. Listen, I don't think you want to be caged with GH, no matter how nice he is. No. If he has that much damage on his ET. Oh, they still managed to get the kill on Stinger, though. With a score, he, third. Yeah, he was trying really hard to get that neutral creep denial. This is, uh, this is such a good clock game. I don't know what happened to Kuro and why he decided to pick such heroes, because when clock was picked, it wasn't really that great for him. He was versus BL and Vyvern Doom. But right now, he has Lina and GH that he can just constantly control and chase around the woods, and he's doing that. You can see that Miracle makes his own rotation as they're going to try to chase down Lelis. Schofield will hold him back a little bit, but they find the kill. And it looks like they should be able to maybe lock down this little guy. It's not looking he's great, good. though. He's pretty fast. He's fine. Schofield is completely good. He's running good. Even Kuro's here. Maybe now. All right, That's maybe. pretty much everyone except for Doom. He's still fine. Chasing yeah. a clock. He has cogs. Yes, Cox. Yeah, they're wasting a lot of time. So Schofield time. is yeah, making them r just run circles around that Roshan pit. He's, he's super good in that. And they do have quite a few comfort heroes coming out from the side of the East Coast we talked about. You know, the TA and, of course, you know, Schofield clock. But, you know, we've seen we've seen the power of Miracle's PL in the past. We know that Weeha plays a wonderful Lina. Yeah, th we've seen the power of Miracle's PL, but at the same time, they, they took him down that last game. They proved to everyone that Miracle PL can bleed, can lose, and maybe they'll do it again, because so far the game is kind of even, but they, I, I, I believe in them. I think they have a solid lineup to transition into the mid-game to start pressuring the PL. The only thing is they're playing versus GH, ET, this guy right here. He's already shown just how much damage he can dish out early on versus that clock, and he has set up this top lane for success for this PL. As you can see, Underlord, he's not having nearly as much impact as he had in that last game. I definitely feel like it's because they've made so many rotations, right? You've mm, seen definitely. the PL has gone over, he's TP to the shrine, he's also doing some jungling. So it feels like Miracle just wants to focus on farm, not have to worry with a lot of harassment. I definitely agree. It's, it's also because clock has been rotating about, right? You can see this clock rotating mid, rotating around the jungle, and then Underlord is just left alone, so you can't really pressure as much. Yeah, I was surprised because there was still a tiny left in the pool when they picked up Schofield's clock, but again, it, it, it's a comfort pick, so perhaps that's why they, they opted for it. And they did play into it, like you said, think about having the, uh, the Lena and the ET, but some harassment coming out on Miracle in the top lane. They don't want to let him, you know, get too big because you know, they were able to take him down last game, but that doesn't mean that he's not capable of coming right back again. Yeah, he's angry. He is, he's just chasing down Lelis. that Miracle phantom. right now, I'm afraid. He should be, Lizard, he should be. I do get the arcane ring found by the TA. I'm assuming that we'll see quite a bit of jungling coming out from her. Yeah, this won't work. Uh, battery assault isn't really great versus BL and his illusions, so he just doppelgangs away. They are forcing him to use some spells, but I don't think that's the best usage of this clockwork work at the moment. It just feels like they're trying to be as annoying as possible, right? In fact, they're doing a pretty decent job of the rotation coming out now from the Winter Ivern, slowing down Schofield. They if, don't even need that stomp. If by annoying you mean helping this PL become obnoxious and annoying later on and feeding him, yeah, uh, then they're su succeeding at that. But Clock, I, I believe it would be much better for him to just pressure Lina on mid, because that would force the rotation from Wyvern and ET. Well, we have that rotation coming through. They're trying to protect Weehan. He's still alive. Miracle TPing in along with Mind Control. Just hold into place. The sleep's gonna get used. Plus, Lelis A. Do they have the detection? Uh, you see how we. They're just waiting. They. they <laughs> he knows if he comes closer, he's dead. Oh! Oh! oh but the same oh, coming out from Kuro. Kuroki. Very nice. Yeah, but at the same time, look at this. How many heroes were mid for like 30 seconds? And then keep an eye on, on Hector. They position themselves nicely to be able to grab these runes as well. Mm -hmm. uh, was that outpost. really? Yeah. Was that four bounties? Yeah, that's four bounties for them. It was very good positioning. A Doom did get used. Uh, for some reason, he popped it on Lich, but Lich just moved away. He tried to go for that solo kill there. Viver was close, but not close enough. And Lich is just, all right, you're going to do me. I'm going to walk away. 
Now, is this one of these situations? I know I've seen Schofield play this in a couple of the other position fours where you throw yourself at the enemy just to keep them busy. It doesn't matter if you end up getting taken down. You're just trying to buy time and space for your, your safe laner. Is this a case where this is going to work out for Schofield, do you think? I know you were pleased with that that endeavor. This but. is this is my strategy usually. Just throw myself at the enemy team and call it space. However, in this game, I think that Clockwork should be doing a little bit more. It should be really not... Up. Oh, they're gonna just I'll delete Schofield. We has had enough of his shenanigans. Did he not buy the tome? I think did did Lich take it? Lich is not six as well, so I, I assume they don't have the tome yet purchased. I, I really want to see this clock six as soon as possible so that he can go across the map and catch V. We're gonna go diving past the tower. Mind control. He's waiting for some help. The fear dragging him right back in again. He's still let go at the last second. K1 finding that kill. They use the air splitter. GH gonna come over, just punch Stinger right in the face. It's like, why are you diving behind my towers? Hector making his way to the high ground. Looks like they're not gonna chase after him though. GH was really, really smart there. He was cautious. If he walks uphill, he dies. And he can't kill him because there's rage DP out anyway. So That's it's good true. that he didn't just walk uphill. Bro, he has. I mean, he buys he's a himself bird, a little but he can't time. Buy. But I think uh, I think that's gonna be the end of Kuroki. The Arctic Burn, he used it before. Clock scouted him out in the woods, like Panel has been talking about. He he found him, and then after that, it's just an easy kill. There, he had his ultimate, but if he pops it there, it's just wasted. Now Chris Lock, 300 gold away from Dazzo, 12 minutes in. It's Considering he died once, that's a really decent timing. He also pressured Lina quite a lot. If you see the net worth, Lina is like 1,500 away. So. Look at this harass coming out. They're just trying to rotate Weeha so he's able to find some farm. And do a bit of harassment as well, but... I love those movements from Hector. They're very well thought through. He goes for Lina, he knows he can't kill him. But these kind of movements... Ooh, oh, oh, he's sitting so low right now. Weeha turns back around onto Weeha. He's trying to yeah. just fight through. He can't do it. Caster's curse. Caster's I was just curse. praising him. I love those Hector's moves. He knows exactly what he's doing, Hector. Yeah, never mind. Was this the situation where, you know, we saw how Chris Luck got shut down in game number one with his brood mother yeah, but and then bounced nice back? Do you yeah. think we're going to see something similar with Weeha's Lina this time around? The thing is, how this matchup works out. Lina can definitely deal with the TA in the laning stage because you just LSA and then you hit her until the refraction charges are off and you play around the Psy Blades. But later on, when TA gets that blink and Dazzo, you're the one constantly being hunted on, on Lina. It's obviously, if you play right, you can be the hunter as well, but usually it is the TA that's making moves and you're forced to be defensive. If you poke your head out in a wrong moment, you just die. You can see that Chris Luck and Hector, top of the net worth right now, although it does just get changed out a little bit with uh, PL. They are very neck and neck, but having that uh, Desso online will ensure that they can get a nice early Roche. Doom's going to get used on Hector. Oh, Schofield no. trying to push him away, burn some of that mana, but he's not going to be able to save his core here. So he just turns around, he tries to fight to no avail. Winter's Curse will be able to go, hold into place, and that's just a very dead Schofield. That wasn't the play by Schofield. He didn't try to push them away. He tried to keep them in, to lock them in the cog so they can't really chase onto the Knights, onto Hector. Uh, overall, Hector did that on purpose he was hitting that tower so that they don't go and check Roshan right he created enough space for the TA was that truly worth it and was that truly necessary I'm not certain because it didn't look like Nigma uh, were even thinking about going into that pit to check it so, so a bit unnecessary unnecessary sacrifice from Hawk and Nikes definitely I think we will see Beast Coast start making moves now that they do have the Aegis. They've got the Dasso, and we can see, again, working on the Blink. Yep. I love the item build from Underlord again. Lelis this time around is going straight into the Crimson Guard. Crimson versus PL is just amazing. It's one of the best items to get, to get versus this hero. Uh, I, I see a Radiance queued up by Nikes. Last game, he didn't go for that. He went for Mjolnir, and it, it worked out really well because he was hitting other targets, not only OD. This time around, if he deals with the PL, TA will deal with everyone else, so it, it might be a good idea. Also, it's very good versus Winter Wyvern, getting these magic damage dealing items. Getting those procs, right? Yeah. yeah. 
And also just great against people who are on the squishier side. And making sure that they have less mobility. I love him, Spall. I just love it on su such heroes like TA. It feels like so some of these items are just, if you get them, it's just so perfect. Uh, Schofield just pushes back onto mind control. This clock has been doing some work in the early game, but so far he's yet to show us why he was picked, really. He's yet to make those awesome, awesome, amazing moves that are going to uh, justify the pick for us, to justify the clock instead of time. Minutes. Top lane, Winter's Curse is going to get used to hold Lelis into place. GH, go use that Earth Splitter on Lelis, and they'll just stay, just chain lock him into place, and there's going to be Laguna Blade coming out from He Lina. thought about Ubering out, but then he realized there's no way. I'm, I'm done. So. He was also chain stunned. He couldn't. Even if he wanted to, he couldn't uh, use his ulti. Yeah, I was waiting to see if he'd be able to go and queue it up, but it just you don't survive against all that lockdown. Not without the rest of your team, at the very least. And in that case, he was very far forward in the dire portion of the jungle. I wonder when we're going to start to see this. I would like to see the TA and the, the clockwork start to move together. You've talked about this before. In fact, there's the clockwork. It's just pushing back again, but he has to be really careful because Miracle's just going to run up on him and beat him down. Yeah, clockwork. He tried to do exactly. He, they're listening to you, SA Mamacita. You see, like, Clock is on their <laughs> not side. Not like instantly, that, boy. Instantly, TA, but, you know, like, not all your calls are perfect, let's be real. So maybe they shouldn't listen all the time. Um, Clock and TA definitely should work together from now on, as TA has bought that Blink Dagger, and it's, now is the time to shine. Mules yep, gets used by We Force forward. Chain Frost gets a couple of these bounces, but immediately the Delta split comes out from the side of Nigma. Miracle joint. I feel like Miracle has been so active this game. Definitely. He has this diffusal of his. He's been rotating to help mid, rotating uh, to help with clock problem, left, right, and center. He's, he's doing his thing quite all right. Um, at the same time, I have a feeling Beast Post is just chilling. They're waiting for their items, they're waiting for their timing, but. It's problematic when you're waiting too much versus the PL because eventually he will take over. Well, you have to keep him pinned down quite a bit so you can take advantage of that uh, of that lead. But if he's getting kills, especially on this clockwork, if he's being very active like this mm -hmm. and is still able to fire, it's, it's very much like you know you I, see Hector doing a lot of those top tier carries. This patch is you can't just sit back and farm. I. If I was Beast Coast right now, I would force Lelis to push out one of those lanes and play around him with TA and Clock. I have a feeling their biggest problem is the fact that uh, Lelis, Clock and TA aren't playing together at all. They're always picked off on their own. It's a very similar situation right now, but they are around the shrine. They're gonna go right. The Doom comes out on Lelis, plus the Winter's Curse. The hold of the Slitch right into place. Laguna gets used on the back end. So that's two ulties getting used on the Underlord. Stinger will fall. So he tries to put out some of this damage, but they... Wait, Chris Luck gets a kill on Miracle? Mm -hmm. Miracle died, but it looks but like... But it looks like Hector is soon for the grave as well. So he's trying to move away just fast enough. They've got the vision so on him. Fast. The TP comes Where out. is this movement speed coming from? That's Formula 1 right there. Nikes. Race car Nikes. 400 movement speed, all right. Chris oh, Luck is here. Chris Luck, yeah, Chris Luck, he knows that they don't have Doom. They don't have the Winter's Curse anymore. Though they do have Alina coming in from the back lines, but in comes Hector. Again, Aegis Chris Luck out. needs to be careful. Aegis just, just runs out here as Chris Luck, he can't get his way quite fast enough, is going to get taken down. Chain Frost, couple of these nice bounces, should be able to get the kill onto GH as he will fall. And the trap's going to get popped over on the side as now Schofield, oh, no. he's trying. Weeha is going to get taken out. Mind control, the fear spell comes out from Stinger, just luring him in with those eyes. Plus the Frost Shield in comes and this should be a very dead doom. Yeah, they do take down four, but that's literally Chris bad luck, not Chris luck, as that age just ran out just in in the same second. When, when If he only dies just a few seconds earlier, he respawns, he's fine, he's good to go. But he... Maybe they didn't keep the timer in mind or something, but that shouldn't happen on this level. On this level, you know when your Aegis is expiring. Um, they did get jumped. They did get jumped. Just part of that here. What happened? Look at this. He goes in and Aegis expires yeah. right there. I think he thought after. it was just a quick pickoff kill, all right? And just didn't expect them to have so many defensive ways. And again, like you said, Aegis. Even though they did kill him, they lost four in the end for Beast Coast. I think this is a fair trade. They're fine with it. 
Um, and they also killed PL at the beginning of this team fight on the other side of the map. It was Clock and TA that did it together. These rotations, I believe they're the strongest uh, dynamic duo of Beast Coast at the moment. They can just do whatever they want to. They can get any single kill on the map as long as they're together. There's another smoke that gets used, and they have vision on Chris Luck over in the mid lane. He's working on that BKB, getting closer to it. It's a perfect time to pounce. He has no BKB. The same thing they were doing to we in that last game, killing him time and time uh, again before he got that BKB. Oh, Hector held in place. They should be able to chain stun him up. In fact, they'll follow up with Light Striker A, and he's just, he's gone. He's evaporated. Singer next on the list here to get killed. Tries to run out, cannot do it. Miracle's just too strong. Lelis, he's trying to just Uber himself out of a bad situation. Chris Luck is dancing on the side, but there's no way he goes in on this. Go field. Oh, nice play by Weeha. He's gonna go try to hook shot himself away to that small camp. I think they're still chasing. They are. This, yeah. They absolutely. They want this kill. Gonna have to chase a clock for a while. He's oh. pretty speedy here. Another he clock might. play. Can he do it? Oh, he now beat? he can. Now he Easy. can. Easy. We almost landing that LSA. That would have. The very good patience coming out. Not even clock. close. He wasn't even worried. He's like, Radiant chill out, fools. I'm fine. I don't know. I think he was. I think he was very nervous. He was sweating. GH, I love the four staff as well. It's one of these items that's really solid versus clockwork. You get hooked. You, you can force yourself out completely. Defensive item ball from him as well. As the next pickup will be the ghost scepter on uh, GH, so he isn't susceptible at all uh, to die from TA or Nike's bursts. But now that they got that BKB, now that Schofield has created so much space, they can strike. Well, they find this opening in Kuroki. Hookshot comes through from Schofield. They'll go throw out those cocks. And on the back line, I hear a BKB Stop. going off. And I hear a Doom as well, as now it looks like Chris Luck. He needs backup from the rest of his team. Lelis is here. He's going to try to put some space between the TA and the rest of the team. Lelis the bodyguard. He doesn't go He's trying. He's got that. <laughs> He's got that big chunky body here. There's a pull back in. And on the back line, Schofield, he's just trying to separate. And that's one of the great things about this clockwork, is he's able to zone. Sleep gets used again onto Tia. She does not have that BKB, and they've got her all locked up. It's just a dead Chris Luck as Hector joining back in the fight, but he doesn't have the rest of his team right now. He's got Schofield nearby, and he's just a little bit out of range from the Winter's Curse. Otherwise, I think that would have ended up being a kill for the Winter Wyvern. Instead, it's going to be a yeah, kill for Weeha. It was a range or rage, I'm not certain, but he did manage to get away from Clock in the end and move away. But uh, the way they're being kited by Enigma is very problematic. Enigma is playing around them. They're literally playing around him. Chris Luck as well. I need to stop this, but he's really pushing his luck. He yeah, you're, you're doing that yeah, a lot. I, I, he's, he blinked on the other side of the river. He was alone and he tried to fight them. Maybe he was uh, waiting for the follow-up of Cock. Yeah, miracle. He's got a lot of friends nearby. That Frost Shield coming through. We huh, joining him. GH nearby, but they're going to push back. GH with the four staff. They've the got the Glimmer Cave. They're going to try to pull back in onto Kuro. Light Striker Ray connects over onto Lelis. This feels like there's got to be more people here. It's... They do not dare to go on Kuro, I believe, because it's also high ground, and they're not certain if he has his ulti back up. More aggression coming out from Team Enigma. They just want to erase Lelis, and they'll be able to. Schofield going in with that hook shot. Manages to grab over one. The Fierce Bell dragging right back in over onto Weeha. They need some of these good bounces, but they're not getting Zero any of bounces. these. What is this luck? Weeha now, it does Chris eventually luck. pop because of Chris Luck. <laughs> Schofield, too. Yeah, this is just, it just keeps happening. Kuro, oh, can he get away fast? No, he's going to get taken out. The buyback comes out from Weeha. He managed to get the Light Strike array. He'll take down Hector as Chris Luck. He's got that BKB, but he doesn't have have the backup of his team. He needs help, and he's not going to find it. Nigma looks completely in control at the moment, and this lineup, they're executing and itemizing to perfection. From GHS, Ghost and Four Staffs to these Winter's Curses, the way they're, they're using the Winter's Curse, listen, it's not about making them kill each other. It's about keeping them in spot so that Miracle can get so many illusions around them that Diffusal burns all their mana in a second. After that, it's easy to fight the Nikes that has literally zero mana or a TA as well. So, Nigma, they also did have some luck in that engagement because the Lich's ulti didn't literally went all on the creep wave. Didn't hit the Lina even once. 
Definitely a lot of unlucky bounces, and Stinger is just going to get caught out here as they dive right past that tower. Miracle helping out, but it will be Mind Control who gets the final hit. I think it's um, SA Dota fans, they understand, also Beast Coast, they understand you want game three, so they're maybe giving Nigma a shot, right? <laughs> maybe, I don't know, I think they just... Uh... They would like to be done, more than likely. But again, another one of these fights breaking out. The Lich is going to buy back. As you can see, there's the Atos coming GH's out, holding back. over onto GH. And uh, Stinger, he's just trying to stay alive. But he can't. He just bought back. He can't afford to get take that. Does manage to get his spells off. A couple of these nice bounces from that Crane Frost for a change. But they've already doomed up Hector. And then Mind Control is going to fall. Stinger does die back. There's a lot of illusions just wailing away over onto Hector. That's a dieback like, from right. Lich. At the same time, you killed Doom and you forced the Doom and the Winter's Curse, right? So if Roshan responds in a second or two, and it actually has respawned, you can perhaps go and force that Doom buyback. That's all on Beast Coast to realize that they have this opportunity to go for that big objective. But instead, sadly for them, they're going for the Tier 1. Is it really that bad to go for the the tier one just to help no, no. ensure that you get the you know the to balance out the equilibrium for the Roche? No, it, well? it's all right. It's a decent objective, but oh boy. No field to jump forward from Clear Slug. This Yule though coming out from Weha has helped out so many times. They still have some vision over the miracle, but he is going to be able to get out. They're still checking. They're looking oh, for no. that hook shot. They don't quite manage to find it. As they manage to see, Kuro stuck over on top. They've got the Rod of Atos. Weeha is dishing out some damage. This feels very clunky right now. This doesn't feel great for uh, East Coast. No, they get a Winter's Curse off on the side. They have a Life Stealer Bomb inside of Lelis right now. So they're just kind of man fighting their way through. The Infest will pop back out. They can see Miracle over on the side. They managed to find the kill onto Mind Died Control. Again. That's pretty good, but they lost they the They keep a. losing Chris Luck, and that is... Not where you want to be if you have a TA. Stinger, he's already died. How many times has he died in the Stinger, past? Like two minutes. Uh, he didn't buy the ticket for the bus, so they just left him behind and went back to the fountain with the Underlord. Um, you asked me before about the Tier 1. I think Tier 1 is one of the most important objectives, but in a situation such as that one, maybe it's better to go for the pit. It probably is, because it forces a fight which will be advantageous to it for you, as they have no Doom. He had buyback, but... No doom Radiant's after all. That does open the door now for Miracle to get in that pit. You can see the rock work with the rocket spam. He's scouting it, so you have to be super careful about the way you approach that, Roshan. Also, Pit Lord with the Firestorm, he will be able to repel them. I don't think if you're Enigma, you can go for that. Oh, that's a good hook shot coming out from Schofield. He's managed to hold back. We have the go dock him in place again. Hector coming through. He's raged up. They get the Laguna off over on Schofield. He's totally separated. Hitches a ride, though, over here into Lelis. Hector, he's trying to stay alive. And they'll go drop the Witcher's Curse again just to get that catch onto the side. Lelis, he's got absolutely no mana left. And that Chain Frost comes out. He'll turn back around. Miracle, though, he just says, yeah, no, I don't want to be a part of this fight. He's got GH nearby as that bodyguard should be able to just walk away from this engagement. Although still, he's thinking about going back in again. They're trying to go back in again, but remember, Chris Luck, he used his BKB. He's very susceptible to falling in a matter of seconds if he jumps in the right, in the wrong spot. And it's just Hector versus Miracle right now. That Frost Shield from Stinger helps out a little bit. You can see these wards from uh, Enigma. They're allowing them to fight around here. If if you're Beast Coast, you have to think about uh, map control and getting better vision because they're constantly fighting on their side of the map, but under Enigma's vision. That's a, not acceptable. You need to deal with those wards. It's just how do you even get over to that side of the map right now? It's, it's on your without... side. It is, but right every here, time you cliff. show up, every time you show up, yeah. that happens. I mean, you feed, but you feed for the greater good. But he didn't even do any good over there. He just died. That's and it looks like Lelis now just going to get chased down by four heroes on the side of Enigma. He's got a Life Stealer Bomb in him. I don't know what's really going to help out here, though, as the Infest wears off. It's He's doomed up immediately. They're just Enigma. They're just 
ready. They want this. They've got this aggression. And they're going to just find themselves a kill on Hector on the back lines. You can see Schofield and Chris Luck are here. Can they even get this kill on Curl? They do have the BKB. Looks like Schofield's going to be next to fall. Chris Luck, though, he needs to get out of there. He needs to get out of there really, really fast. His miracle is just throwing his weight around here. Chase down Schofield. Gets the kill and turns his attention now over to Chris Luck, who luckily can blink away thanks to that refraction. Lellis, that I'm not sure so what Willis is there. Why? He just randomly showed up. Not. He bought back as well, so that's a dieback from him. And I believe they still have that Aegis, right? They can go straight up. No Aegis, but whatever. They can just go on the high ground. There is no Underlord. He is their main form of defense. There is also Lich, obviously, but I don't think Lich and Chris Luck are enough. I, I think they're going to have to at least let this tower go. In fact, they managed to stun up Chris Luck. Links he away. lost half of his HP with one hit. He has to be careful when it comes to his positioning. Just let the big boys, Miracle Mind Control, take down these Raxes. Just again, just dancing around the side, trying to figure out how do we get into this without immediately getting blown up. Do you have more heroes alive? Look at the Chain Frost. Doesn't seem like Miracle is even bothered by it at all. He isn't, because he has a Lich of his own. He said, Mind Control, look, I love you, bro, but I love you more as a Lich. Hector TPing on the back lines, is chasing after Mind Control, now turns his attention over to Miracle. As Miracle, again, he's just shredding through this team of Beast Coast. They get another kill on Stinger. I love Ogre Frostmage so much. Mind Control is just making it's so much easier for them to do everything in this game as he is just giving Frost armor to all of his teammates, especially Miracle, obviously, as he's frontlining. You give him that Frost armor and you pretty much have a solid Lich on your side as well. And uh, that bonus armor specifically versus TA is really good and mitigates the damage from the Desolator, most importantly. Oh boy, Hector had the spider legs just keep running over here. It's gonna try to man fight Miracle, but there's mind control nearby. Is that rage? Tries to run away, Spider Legs giving him that free pathing. Right down to Lelis, they'll go throw down the Pit of Malice. And they've got a Lotus Orb though. Lelis throwing out the Atos, there's the Clumsy Nut being thrown out again. As he does have a Life Stealer in him, he's gonna pop back out. There, the Doom is gonna get used again over onto Hector, who's gonna have to walk away from this fight. Cofield placed in kind of an awkward position as they went and they healed up. And he is gonna just get taken down by Miracle to get a couple of these Chain Frost bounces, but they're not really doing anything. And Hector, he's still here, they managed to go throw down the Winter's Curse. Oh, and all he can hit. do now is he has, to, he has to come fight. He has to just fight through it. He's not gonna be able to run away from this right now. GH gets taken down by Chris Luck as they're chasing after Stinger. Kuro trying to flap those wings has, helps out a little bit with Stinger and Miracle really not needing that much of help. How do you take this guy down? And Hector just chasing after we. Yeah, we will be able to get out in the end. He messed that fight up a little bit. The LSA didn't connect on time and now they're oh. again. All right, Chris Luck. Oh, look how fast he's just getting taken out here. They will finally find sentry. the kill onto Mind Control, but Chris Luck, he's just evaporated. Now Hector versus this PL. He's not going to win this battle. He needs help. Weeha's coming around the corner too. There's going to be the Yules. They're setting up for that LSA. And still Hector, he's got no mana. He's got no help. And now Schofield probably going to die for trying to help out his friend. So spider legs can only carry you so far, sir. Look at this chase, the lizard. Weeha eventually cleaning up on Schofield. Hector just trying to buy some time, but it's a godlike miracle. On and this is the PL that we know and love from him. On the left side, we might see Lelis falling here. Once again, he is very beefy, but they do dish out quite a lot of damage between the two of them. Your kid as well. And Miracle is now back in the fray, wants to take a set of Raxes or perha perhaps a tier 2. Uh, that, that whole fight, by the way, could have went much, much easier for Nigma, but they messed up the setup. They used the Winter's Curse into LSA, but LSA came a little bit too late, and because of that, Nikes was able, Hector was able to rage out. He raged out and then shooed we away. If that didn't happen, they blow up the Nikes, and then they could take a clean fight and perhaps even push this high ground on the top lane a little bit faster. So, a little bit of luck for, for uh, East Coast over here, but the game is still in a really, really grim spot. It just feels like Miracle has hit the stride and he's just not afraid of anything. We watched him take the Chain Frost to the face, couple hits from the TA, just felt like a tickle. They don't have the damage anymore. He has Butterfly and Hearts and the Greater Fairy Fire. How, how do you even take him down? That is the question that Beast Coast is trying to figure out, Lizard. And yep. they'll find Lelis and just... Lelis, he's gone. Yeah, he was trying to see if 
bit of malice plus Firestorm is gonna do the thing, but it didn't. SPL is just so incredibly strong. It's gonna make you feel better if you're an Enigma fan right now, right? Because the first game you just you can't believe it's happened, but seeing him in the full stride, being able to man fight pretty much anyone like this, look at this. Hector, he's trying. He's got the frost shield on, but Miracle's just too powerful. So the plan is to lose the lanes. Is that it? I, I don't know. Maybe. We have finding the kill on Schofield and, and Hector. He's got to get Glimmer caved up. He can't stow toe to toe with Miracle. The GG does get the called. Nigma going to bring us to a game number three. Game number three, not only for Nigma's fans, but for fans of everyone that likes this game because the first game was really excellent for everyone from SA. We loved it. We love a good comeback. Broodmother was amazing. At the same time, we really do love a good comeback from a team like Nigma. What they just did came back so strong in the second game. I know that Kuro is a really, really experienced captain and he can just make his team work. He can make them go for that one game deficit into a three game win. Well, it was really funny because earlier, you know, you did make the joke, Lizard. You said, all right, you, we, none of the panel enjoyed the clockwork, right? And then you get the, or rather, they liked the clockwork because there was the Lena picked up. And they were trying to figure out, why would you put a Lena? Like, they're like, oh, no, this is never going to work out. And you said, you know, Curl was like, I gave you an easy draft last time. You didn't do it. I'm going to give you something harder. And you were like, it's going to push them forward. It actually did. It happened. It worked. They, they looked very, very clean in that fight, you, you know, all the fights that were going on. The PL got massive and it just, everything stars aligned. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, when we come back, we're going to have game number three.